Hello and welcome to University of Auckland's Nectar onboarding videos. This session of six short videos is intended to provide a hands-on guide to getting you up and running with a remote Windows virtual machine on the University of Auckland's Nectar cluster. My name is Chris and I will be going through various aspects of this over the course of these videos. Before we start, I'd like to draw your attention to some useful links. Most of the work we'll be doing in this video session it will be in the Nectar dashboard. This can be accessed via dashboard.rc.nectar.org.au. The information that we are providing here is a very sparse, bare bones set of instructions in order to get you up and running. For more information about Nectar, we highly recommend the Nectar tutorials. These can be found at tutorials.rc.nectar.org.au and include information ranging from what is the cloud all the way through to how you set up specific instances with their own advanced networking. In addition to this resource, Nectar also provides a solutions knowledge base and this can be found at support.ehelp.edu.au slash support slash solutions. In part one of this video series, we will be covering what is required to request an allocation. Specifically, we will be logging into the dashboard for the first time so that you may see what you would see when you log in. We'll look briefly at the test project page that is set up when you apply for a Nectar allocation. We'll then look at how one would go about requesting an allocation of resources that is more suited to your research needs. And then once that has been done, we would look at how you would go about changing projects so that you can then access the resources that you have been allocated. At this point, I'd like to note that some of the details that we describe in this video are specific to the University of Auckland. While we're making every attempt to highlight these, I know for a fact that I will miss some at some point. So I would ask that if you are a Nectar user using Nectar on a different node to the University of Auckland, that you please contact your local node and check with them before following these instructions. I'd also like to note that these videos are freely available public domain. Now before we get started using Nectar, one of the questions we get asked a lot at the Centre for eResearch about Nectar is how much resource, how many resources should I apply for? In order to help make that decision, we've provided a set of vanilla options. These are typical types of allocation that you may need. As always, however, uh, the, what you need will depend on your specific research project. When determining how much resource you should allocate, if you find you are having difficulty doing this, please contact your local Nectar node or if you are at the University of Auckland, please contact the Centre for eResearch and we can walk through that with you. Now I am going to load up my Nectar dashboard so I will be with you in just a second. Okay, so I have gone to the Nectar dashboard uh, at dashboard 
www.rc.nectar.org.au. When this is loaded, there are several things that I'd like to draw your attention to. If you look at my mouse cursor, you can see that I am pointing to the current project that I am in. This is a trial project which is similar to the one that you will get when you first log in to Nectar and it's indicated with PT and then a set of numbers. In this trial project if we now look at the main window we can see that I have a small number of resources allocated to me. I have two instances that I can create. When we're thinking of an instance we can think of that as being similar to a remote computer. So with this trial allocation I can create two remote computers that I can access. I have two virtual CPUs, vCPUs, so I can assign these to one virtual computer and have a dual core machine or I can split these up and have two single CPU computers with the two instances I have. With my virtual CPUs I have also been allocated 8 gigabytes of RAM and again I can allocate that so that I end up with that pulled for one computer or split over two. We'll cover information on volumes in a later section, a later video. Uh, the thing to remember here is that these are effectively hard drives so you can attach additional storage to put your data in. The stuff in the network section is beyond the scope of these videos. If you look on the left hand side you can see where my mouse is pointing that there are a series of tabs which we can close or open to look at the options that are under each. In order to request a new allocation we need to go to the allocations tab which is down at the bottom. When we click on the allocations tab that opens up and we have the option of submitting a new request or looking at my existing allocations. We need to submit a new request for a new allocation of resources so we click that and then we can see we're taken to a, another web page where there is a form for us to fill in. We have some information about the project that is required so we need to give it a short name which is the project identifier. We need to give it a more descriptive name which I can't spell and then we're asked what the project duration is. Now when we look at this you can see there are four options between one and twelve months. Should you require the resources for longer than twelve months select twelve months as the project duration. At the end of that time you will be emailed asking if you wish to continue using the resources uh, that you have been allocated and you can reply to say yes you wish to continue using those resources. There's an option here to convert a trial project. This is used if you have started, uh, you've been playing with your trial project, you've set some stuff up and you would like to keep using that. There is the option you select yes from the drop down box to migrate that across to the new project. 
in most cases selecting no is what you'd normally do. We then come to a section of cloud resources. These are various things that you can request as resources for your allocation. We need some compute, so we select the red button, turn it to green, and then we need to request a certain number of CPUs. Typically this would be in the order of 4 to 8. Um, for a big project with multiple instances you may need more. A typical maximum that we would allocate for a single instance would be 16 cores. Should note when you're looking at this that there is no information about the amount of memory that is requested. You get a fixed block of RAM with each of those cores. There are two other options. Apologies, we need to have the ability to create at least one instance. And there are two other options CPU optimized flavors and RAM optimized flavors. CPU optimized flavors provide you with the same amount of memory per CPU as a balanced option, but they prioritize the um, use of that CPU. These are shared resources that we're using, and so if you require something that is CPU intensive, we can ensure that that has pushed up the queue a bit. It's uncommon for you to need CPU optimized flavors. More commonly, however, you may need RAM optimized flavors. These will allocate twice the amount of RAM per CPU when you select um, the appropriate flavor. And this is useful if you have big data sets where you're going to be limited by the amount of memory that you have available. In order to request RAM optimized flavors, click the button, select it from on to off. The other thing that we are going to cover in this series of videos is volume. Volume storage is effectively a hard drive that you are attaching to your virtual machine. Again, to request volume storage, come to the bottom where you see volumes to service, select on, and then enter the number of gigabytes of information that you need. For example, I might need 250 gigabytes worth of data to store. Once you've selected the amount of memory that you need, come to the drop down box just to the right of it and select Auckland. Now this is an Auckland specific selection. Please contact your local node if you are not based at the University of Auckland to identify where that storage should be. We then have a section on the usage. This is um, part to ensure that we capture information about the nature of the research that we are supporting. Of note is the box on special location requirements. Uh, often if you look at the ethics requirements of research projects there are clauses in there about data management and in some cases um, data needs to be retained within um, the boundary of New Zealand for example uh, so this is an opportunity for you to make a note in here that that information needs to stay within the country's borders need to identify the fields of research and if you drop down one of these you can see all of the different fields of research that are available and which institution is supporting this work. If you are a postgraduate researcher, postgraduate student 
um, you would need to identify who your supervisor is as the chief investigator. For the case of University of Auckland researchers, when you come to the research grant information, please select I don't have any grants. And once you've done this, you'll then see uh, that section disappears and you can submit your allocation request. And once you've submitted the allocation request, it typically takes up to 24 hours for that to be approved. If you find after 24 hours that you have not had your allocation approved, please contact um, us at Center for eResearch if you are based at the University of Auckland and we'll be able to chase that up. So I'm just going to return back to the original view that we had and look at how we go about changing projects. So I've submitted a request and had it approved. I have a new pool of uh, resources available to me and I would like to access those. In order to do so, I come up to my project title in the top left hand side. I click the down arrow which brings up a list of projects that I have access to and I select the new project with its allocation of resources. After a few minutes the web page will refresh and I can see my new um, allocation. So I am now working in a project where we can see I have more resource available to me. This brings video one to a conclusion and I hope this has been useful and I look forward to talking to you in video two.